It is indeed an honor and a privilege to welcome Dr. Judith Jones to the podium to deliver the 2014 Henry M. Goldman School of Dental Medicine keynote address, and I know she will be an inspiration and example to all of us. Please welcome Dr. Judith Jones. The binder's a little thinner. Thank you. I'm humbled to be here with you today. I thank Dean Hutter for his support and confidence, and all of you for being here. I give special thanks to my husband, Michael, our two daughters, Lorraine and Helen, and Michael's parents, Walter and Lorraine, for their love and support. Dean Hutter, fellow faculty, graduating colleagues, honored families and guests, partners and friends. Congratulations. Congratulations to each and every one of you. To the graduates, your families, your partners and your friends, you did it. You have worked hard, studied hard, played hard, and learned much. You have all done that, or you wouldn't be here. So now what? 42 years ago, I graduated from dental hygiene school. Six years later from dental school, 12 years ago from the Henry M. Goldman School of Dental Medicine. Because I have been in your shoes a couple of times or more, I am honored to share with you some ideas that have shaped my career and my wishes for our shared future. First, continue to be a lifelong learner. It sounds trite. We hear it all the time, but it's really important. Michelangelo said, I am still learning. I figure if it's good enough for Michelangelo, it's good enough for the rest of us. I, too, am still learning. I learn from my colleagues from my mentors, my mentees, and from you, the students, every day I go to work. When I practice, each patient is an opportunity to be better at diagnosis, better at treatment, and better at communication. It's called practice for a reason, and I hope you continue to practice for the rest of your lives. Which brings me to my second point. Strive for excellence in everything that you do. To maintain excellence, we need to be proactive and meticulous and continue to learn. Look on today's graduation as the beginning, not the end of your learning. Only now you, and not your faculty, must take charge of your own learning. We must all continue to be diligent, imaginative, and creative learners. After all, it is the art and science of dental medicine. Third, recognize new opportunities when they appear. Dental medicine has many opportunities to be creative. It is your creativity in dentistry that will maintain your interest over the next five decades, like TK. Recognize and act on your opportunities, and don't be afraid to create your own path. Sometimes taking a new direction is unsettling. Be courageous and creative, not just in research, but every day. Fourth, in a time of stark income inequality, remember that we are not just responsible for ourselves and for our families. We are also community leaders. We are responsible to the greater community. When I encounter homeless people on the corner of Albany Street asking for change, and the homeless veterans in my clinical practice, I am reminded that there but by the grace of God go I. Responsibility, service to the community, 
and to the profession or values we hold dear. Responsibility and service are hallmarks of the Henry M. Goldman School of Dental Medicine. Don't hold back. Change the world. Serve your community. Do your part. I have seen you do this during your time at BU. Never stop. And speaking of doing your part, I, for one, am very grateful to the opportunities afforded to me by my education. As a result, I want to give back. And I hope now and along the way, you will give back to your profession and your school who have given so much to you. Be an ambassador for BU. Show the world what we, BU Henry M. Goldman School of Dental Medicine grads can do. Send young people, family members, along the way to us for their education. Your education will allow you to build a good life with the people that you love. Give of your time and your treasure. And speaking of treasure, Malcolm Gladwell, in his book, Outliers, said that it's not how much money we make that ultimately makes us happy. Rather, three things, autonomy, complexity, and connection between effort and reward are qualities that work must have if it is to be satisfying. You have the right stuff to be happy and to be satisfied in your career. Because you are a learned professional, you will have an opportunity to work autonomously. With that autonomy comes great responsibility to do good, to do no harm, to be truthful and respectful with your patients, always putting their needs above your own. As for complexity, dental me medicine is anything but simple which is why we need to strive for excellence and create creativity in our work and be those lifelong learners. If we do all these things, we will see Gladwell's connection between effort and reward. And I mean not only material reward, that helps, but it's more the intangible things, the restoration of function in our patients, the prevention of new disease in someone who has known nothing else, a new smile in a grandmother or a child. Think back over these last few years that you've been in Boston. Looking back, life has been good, but it has not always been easy. We have seen the Red Sox and Patriots and Bruin successes. We have collected and bagged food and toys and gone to Rosie's place, to China and Central and South America. We have seen terrorism in our city, and we in Boston have been resilient and bounced back. We are Boston strong and Boston proud, and now BU proud. Looking ahead, you will know pain and suffering and disease. Carry it well. Work with your family and your friends, your partners and the members of your dental team so that your burdens are shared by people who care about you and those you care about. There we have it. Comedian George Burns once said, the secret of a good sermon is to have a good beginning and a good ending and then have the two as close together as possible. <laughs> Actually, I think he was thinking of commencement speeches. Before I close, I will read the words of a poem written by one of my favorite people, my own mother. She knew what was most important in life. The title of her poem was The Last Will and Testament, and it's subtitled To All My Friends and Family. To you I leave a warm spring rain, the lonely whistle of a passing train, a sky of blue, a love that's true. Hot, lazy summer days, the warmth of an August sun's rays, cool, cool waters near a sandy, warm beach, beautiful stars, 
beyond your reach. The smell of autumn, the falling of leaves, rustling sounds of a walk in the woods, diamonds in the snow, icicles melting, hot, cozy fireplaces, and popcorn popping. Warm spring rain, buds poking through, green grass and leaves and flowers of every hue. Love them, for God gave them to all of you. So thank you again for the honor of being here. Soon it will be time to celebrate. In closing, I will remind you of what that great Boston patriot, no, not Bill Belichick, not, not Tom Brady, but Ben Franklin said that beer is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy. So, so celebrate, be happy, congratulations, and thank you.